This is your news source evening bulletin for today, Friday, the 24th day of March in the year 2023. I'm Gordon Mosley reporting. Here's what we're tracking tonight. High Court Judge Gino Passat this afternoon ruled that President Irfan Ali's suspension of the chairman and members of the Police Service Commission back in 2021 was unconstitutional and unlawful. Retired Assistant Commissioner of Police Paul Slow was the chairman of the Police Service Commission at the time of the suspension, and he was the one who moved to the court against the president's actions. In ruling in favor of Slow, Justice Passat said that in the absence of a Judicial Service Commission and the tribunal, the president had no authority to suspend the chairman and other members of the Police Service Commission. Justice Passat said President Ali breached the Constitution when he failed to appoint a tribunal on the advice of the Judicial Service Commission to address the issue of the removal of Mr. Slow and his fellow commissioners from the Police Service Commission. In June 2021, President Irfan Ali suspended the then Chairman of the Police Service Commission, Paul Slow, and the other members of the Commission, Michael Summersall, Claire Alexis Jarvis, Vesta Adams, and Clinton Conway, based on the advice of Prime Minister Mark Phillips. In handing down the suspension, the President sought to activate the doctrine of necessity, on the basis that at the time, the Judicial Service Commission was not duly constituted, and therefore could not advise on the establishment of a tribunal. But Justice Passat said the failure to constitute the Judicial Service Commission could not be used as a reason to activate the doctrine of necessity. The judge also noted that all members of the Judicial Service Commission are appointed by the President after meaningful consultations with the relevant constitutionally prescribed functionaries. Justice Passat said there was no evidence to suggest that the President took steps to constitute the Judicial Service Commission. Attorney General Anil Nan Lal in defending the case that the president was prompted to act in light of the charges that were pending against Mr. Slow and the court action to which the commissioners had joined. But the high court judge said Mr. Slow at the time was not found guilty of committing any crime and as such has the right to the presumption of innocence as set out in the Constitution. The parties have agreed to make submissions in relation to costs. Mr. Slow was represented by attorney Selwyn Peters and Dexter Todd. More news coming up in just a moment. It's been a long time coming. Overdue, some might say. But now that it's here, it will change life forever. And it is here to stay. The future is now. Transforming Guyana into the 21st century. Introducing GTT Fiber. Experience internet connectivity like never before. Speeds you deserve at prices you can afford from a name you can trust. Sign up today. GTT Fiber is here. GTT. Together, we rise faster. At Giftland Office Max, we're all about customer satisfaction. Whether it's clothing and shoes for the ladies, gents, and kids, or for the latest electronics or hardware appliance, we're always thinking of satisfying you, our dear customers. Now you can shop online at www.giftlandofficemax.com or visit us at the Giftland Mall, where we're happy to serve each and every one of you. Did you know that you can check your NIS contributions online? Simply visit our website at www.nis.org.gy. Click on the Create New Account button and enter the required information. An automatic email notification will be sent to acknowledge your application. Once your information is authenticated, you will receive an email within 48 hours with instructions on how to access the site. Once logged in, you can click on the My Contributions tab on the left side of the screen to view your contributions. For further information, you can call our Records Department on 225-2798 or visit your nearest NIS office. Bust the flavor, flavors! We're full of flavor, flavor, flavors! Bust the flavors! That my craver! We're full of flavors! Tell your neighbors about the bust the flavor, flavors! Grab a Flavor, 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 yeah. Terrace Buster, grab a Buster, Buster flavor.
flavor, taste the savor. Busta, Busta flavor, flavors. Busta, Busta flavor, flavors. Strong and solid, in countries far and wide. You in your assurance, we're standing by your side. Golden service, half a century and more. You in your assurance, our policies are secure. From the heart of India, we serve these islands to strengthen you. Assurance Company. Assurance when you need it most. For your home, motor or business insurance, visit New India Guyana office, 58 Brigdam next to Star Computers. Telephone 2260-4157. Comfortable parking available. The government of Guyana has agreed to reinstitute the issuance of subventions international decade for people of African descent assembly Guyana. In updating the Chief Justice Roxanne George on the progress made since the matter was sent to mediation, Attorney at Law Dr. Vivian Williams said the two sides engaged in a settlement meeting on Monday, the 20th of March. He said at that meeting, the parties agreed, and the government, through the Attorney General, reaffirmed the government's commitment to support the work of the organization for the remainder of the decade, and that it was agreed that the pledged support will be demonstrated by the government, provided the subvention which was provided in the past. Dr. Williams, who together with Attorney at Lord Nigel Hughes, is representing Epatogy, said the two sides are now discussing the process of implementing the disbursement of the subvention. He said the meeting ended with a commitment by the Attorney General to review a proposal which was submitted by the organization on Tuesday. The state's principal legal advisor, Shoshana Lal, who appeared on behalf of the Attorney General, confirmed that the government has agreed to reinstitute the subvention. She said there is a commitment in principle to honor the work of the international decade. Lyle said while the proposal has been received, the Attorney General, who has been on travel duty for the last three weeks, was only able to have sight of the proposal on Thursday upon his return. It was immediately sent to the Minister of Culture, Youth and Sport, Charles Ramson Jr. for his consideration, and his response is pending. As such, on behalf of the Attorney General, she asked that the matter be adjourned for two weeks to facilitate further discussions with a view to arrive at a settlement. The Chief Justice, upon hearing the report, said she was pleased with the progress made so far. The case will be called again on the 14th of April for a further report. The Epanogy organization moved to the court late last year after the government, with effect from September, withheld its monthly subvention of $8 million over claims of malpractice and misappropriation of funds. The organization rebuffed the government's and its claims and placed its financial records up for scrutiny. During an earlier hearing of the matter, the Chief Justice said the issue was a national embarrassment. Well, the leader of the opposition, Aubrey Norton, is accusing Vice President Barra Jack Dio of attempting to distract the attention of citizens from the high cost of living that they are facing and other issues plaguing the Guyanese society. On Thursday, the Vice President declared that his party is on firm footing as it prepares for the upcoming local government elections in June. He also spoke about the party fulfilling many of its manifesto promises over the past two years. But in a statement this morning in response to the Vice President, the opposition leader Aubrey Norton said, Mr. Jack Deer needs to face and address the real issues affecting citizens and the issues that people are more concerned about. He also wants to distract from the high cost of living. We gave him a number of proposals in the budget to deal with the high cost of living. We gave him a number of proposals in the budget to deal with poverty, but they cannot because they are so greedy. They are focusing everything on infrastructure so that they can enjoy the corruption that comes from that. The opposition leader said the vice president is also trying to turn away attention from the multi-million US dollar contract that the government has signed with a German company for the new e-identification card. He hinted at corruption being evident in that transaction, since from all appearances the project could have been secured for half of the price. Mr. Norton also attacked the Vice President on the issue of race and discrimination. He said those are issues that must be addressed. He's trying to shift away, distract people 
from the fact that the government is under consistent criticism for its racism. Busing cannot remove the fact that this government is racist and is discriminating against people. The government of Guyana has repeatedly rubbished claims of racism and discrimination and has pointed to its infrastructure work and other activities being spread out across the country in various communities. Still, the opposition leader said the vice president and the government need to begin leveling with the people of Guyana and put systems in place to assist them to get out of poverty and their suffering. Guyana, right into the future with the next generation eco-friendly Axiom installed elevators and escalators. Call us today on telephone number 619-0899 or 648-0934. Email us at axiomliftsgy at gmail.com for affordable elevators, escalators, moving walks, industrial lifts, home solutions, modernization, repair and servicing. Axiom Elevator Services, technology for people on the move. night event. Doors open from 3 p.m. to 1 a.m. Free cocktail hour, 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Sundress soiree. You know the vibes. Well, while agreeing with those parts of the recently released U.S. State Department report on human rights in Guyana that speaks to progress in several areas, the government intends to raise its concerns about other parts of the report with the U.S. government, according to the Vice President Barra Jagdio. So there are many factual errors in the report, and we intend to correct those. But there are, one, there are a number of definitive statements made by the State Department report that when taken as a whole, you would see the characterization. The report states that the government of Guyana had a good year last year in relation to allowing the independent media to operate without restrictions, investigating human rights violations and addressing some race issues. According to Mr. Jagdio, those are the key points of the report that must be celebrated. Those are key issues. Press freedom, no political prisoners, you have people of every race in the government, the government punishes, investigates and punishes people for human rights, abuse and, and, and corruption. These are strong, definitive statements made in that report. And while several organizations, including the Amerindian People's Association, complained to the U.S. State Department about not being engaged by the Ghanaian government on critical issues on Amerindian rights, Mr. Jagdio said the government has no concern with those complaints, since it believes that it does not have to consult with those bodies on some issues. Let's tell you now that a Sophia couple escaped an execution attempt last night, but a 34-year-old woman and her reputed husband are both nursing gunshot injuries. The businesswoman, whose name was not released, was outside her shop in Beefield Sophia with her husband on the inside on Thursday night when a dark-colored car pulled up and three armed men emerged from the vehicle and opened fire on both the husband and wife. A police statement said all three men were armed with guns and wearing masks. After firing several shots at both the woman and the man, the three re-entered the heavily tinted car and made good their escape. The injured man managed to rush to his wife's aid and took her to the hospital in his minibus. The man sustained two gunshot wounds to his back, while the woman was shot to the right side of her face, to her right upper arm and to her left elbow. Both were later admitted to the intensive care unit of the hospital. Police investigators said they found a number of 9mm spent shells and a suspected warhead at the scene. Investigators are relying on the footage obtained by surveillance camera in the shop to assist with the probe.
A motive for the attack is still to be determined. Food Max Supermarket, located on the ground floor of the Giftland Mall, is your one-stop shop for all your grocery needs. We stock a variety of imported frozen meat and food products, fresh produce and pet supplies, freshly made bread, rotisserie chicken and patties are also available daily. Shop in comfort today at Food Max and let our courteous staff assist you in satisfying your shopping needs. Food Max, the fresh food specialist. It's one of your biggest goals, getting your own home, where memories are made, where happiness lives. You may feel that home ownership or renovation is beyond your reach, but we at Republic want you to know that there's always a way. Ask us about our suite of mortgages. Let's help make your housing wishes come true or advise on how the equity in your existing home can finance other dreams and goals. Call or go online to learn more. Look who's in the mix now. The new Buster Soda Water. Zero calories. Zero sugar. Zero artificial flavors. 100% refreshing. Taste Buster Soda Water today. Buster Soda Water. Now available for only $120. Gaiol Super 95 Gasoline gives you more reasons to drive and is available at 56 service stations nationwide. For affordable price, high performance and high mileage, choose Gaiol's Super 95 Gasoline. Across the region tonight, Brazilian President Lula da Silva has been diagnosed with mild pneumonia and will delay his departure to China until Sunday, his presidential palace has announced. The president underwent tests in the hospital in Brasilia on Thursday night and his Friday schedule will be cancelled. The president underwent tests in the hospital in Brasilia on Thursday night and his Friday schedule was cancelled. The president was initially supposed to leave to the Asian country tomorrow morning for a visit to refresh its ties with Brazil's longest and largest export market. The president will be accompanied by a large delegation that includes half a dozen cabinet ministers, governors, lawmakers and 240 business leaders. Chinese President Xi Jinping is set to meet with the Brazilian president on the 28th of March in Beijing. The government of Antigua and Barbuda has extended an invitation to the United Nations High Commission for Refugee and International Organization for Migration to meet with a group of West African migrants that are in the country. About 637 of the more than 900 Africans who touched down in Antigua from Nigeria between November and January as tourists are still on the island. The West Africans hail from several countries including conflict-ridden Cameroon. A note from Antigua and Barbuda's cabinet meeting on Wednesday said the IOM and the UN body will invest investigate the situation of migrants in Antigua and Barbuda. The investigation the cabinet believes will likely reveal who wants to return and who prefers to stay in Antigua. And finally tonight, international news. The BBC reports that the US and Canada have reached a deal to reject asylum seekers at unofficial border crossings. Large numbers of migrants have been making unsanctioned crossings via Roxham Road at the US-Canada border. The move closes a loophole created by a 2004 asylum agreement with the U.S. on where migrants have to make their asylum claims. It allowed Canada to turn migrants away at official points of entry, but not at unofficial crossing points. As part of the deal, Canada will now also create a new refugee program for 15,000 migrants fleeing persecution and violence in South and Central America. 
The new deal extends the asylum agreement along the entire 9,000 kilometer border and is to go into effect at midnight tonight. And that's your news source evening bulletin for tonight and this week. I'm Gordon Mosley reporting and encouraging you to stay safe.